So here we have Mick Make Mail. Oh, hang on, what are we up to? That's it, Mick Make Mail number 17. And as you can see, I've got a whole stack of stuff. I've got a uh, printer, I know that. And I've got something else, something else, and something else. Let's get stuck into it. Now let's uh, start with the biggest one first. Um, I know this is a printer uh, because I asked Gearbest to uh, send me one for review. This one has been security checked by DHL. I noticed that there's this big sort of protruding bump here. I don't think Gearbest would have packed it like this. I hope it hasn't been damaged in transit. Okay, that's bizarre. I suspect that uh, probably DHL suddenly realized, oh, there's a part left over after the security check and they just quickly chucked it in. Um, that's good. A nice little uh, adapter for the Aussie uh, GPO outlet. So this printer comes as a kit. Uh, it's the Anet A6 3D printer. It's a DIY kit. Uh, they claim it can go up to, uh, what is it, uh, 12 microns on the X and Y axis and uh, four microns on the Z axis. So uh, everything all comes as, you know, laser cut, acrylic, uh, stepper motors, you know, you've got the whole kit. Uh, yeah, and also the uh, worm gears. So uh, it's looking like a fairly complex kit. To be honest, I don't think I'll be able to unpack this in this video. So I'll have to make a dedicated video for it. So I think it's, it's a fairly decent printer from what I hear uh, for the price, uh, for about 200 bucks. Uh, heated bed, you've got 220 uh, millimeters cubed. The reason why I wanted to get a printer is so I could actually start uh, producing uh, cases for a lot of my projects, put them up on Thingiverse uh, so people can download and, and print uh, and make their own cases. So that's the reason why I got it. So it was actually Banggood, not um, Gearbest. Banggood uh, kindly sent me this uh, unit uh, to review. Uh, I'll have that review up uh, at some stage in the future. So stay tuned for that. Uh, so it's... Let's look at uh, what's next. So this next one, uh, this one comes from Gearbest and uh, they contacted me a while ago to uh, ask if I wanted to review a couple of products. These are the products I was expecting. If only I could open this thing. So they sent me uh, two products. Uh, one is a B-Link uh, AP34 mini PC, which I wanted to have a look at, because the reason is a lot of these mini PCs that are coming out, it'd be nice if I could actually get access to the uh, GPIOs on the board. Uh, so I thought I'd just pick this one out because it has a um, Apollo Lake uh, N3450 uh, CPU on it, and it comes as Visa 450 sort of footprint. It means you can attach to the back of a monitor if you want to. This, so this one has uh, 4 gigs DDR3 RAM. You can go up to 8 gigs, uh, as far as I know. Uh, 64 gig EMMC. Uh, what else? Uh, SD slot, USB 3.0, gigabit Ethernet. HDMI goes to 4K out, which is nice. Dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Uh, and that's about it. So I might just uh, fire this one up and see how it goes. My age-old problem, I get uh, these types of plugs. Uh, but that's not an issue, it's uh, 12 volts in at 1.5 amps. Alright, there we go. Um, okay, so of course it starts up in the standard Windows 10. Uh, let's run a benchmark and see what sort of response to get from it. So I'm going to do a quick and dirty review on this uh, B-Link um, and later on, later on I'll do a proper review. So I'm downloading GFX Bench, I'll run that. So I installed uh, GFX Bench, let's see how it goes. So look, the car chase uh, benchmark was pretty abysmal. Uh, I was getting probably around about 6 to 8 frames per second just by looking at it. And the Manhattan test is pretty jerky as well so so the b-link it's not really a games machine as you can see it's going from uh, I think uh, two frames per second to a peak of 15 frames per second 
So it's definitely not a games machine, but it's probably fairly usable as a, as a desktop, which is the intent. It will be able to play um, 1080p video without a problem. Let's see how I can get into BIOS and see if I can install Debian Linux. So the BIOS is fairly basic. Um, I don't really see there being anything incredibly fantastic with this. All we have is secure boot setup uh, and an option to be able to change the boot disk. Very basic uh, BIOS. Let's see how we go. Okay, so I wasn't able to uh, ever boot uh, Debian. I suspect that's probably because this is a 32-bit UEFI BIOS and it just doesn't uh, boot the 64-bit UEFI. So in the end I used Refine to uh, boot up Ubuntu and that worked without issue and I could have installed it uh, straight away but I chose not to because I wanted to keep this box uh, as a Windows only boot. Anyway, uh, let's crack it open and um, see what it looks like on the inside. It's interesting that they've put uh, some a thermal pad on here. Uh, obviously the CPU is directly underneath there. I'm trying to extract some of the heat out of, but I guess it works. So then it should just pop out, hopefully. Oh yeah. There's not a heck of a lot to see really on this. There's the aerial for both uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Uh, there's a couple of extra SMD locations that aren't being used. So let's check to see what's under this heatsink. I can't get that last screw out. I suspect that it's been uh, Loctited in and all I'm doing is just burring it. So the only way of getting that out is to use a Dremel. From what I can see, we've got some flash over here. Uh, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip. We've got ALC audio decoder chip and a Realtek chip here. So it's fairly condensed board um, and there's a couple of other uh, small SMD components that haven't been soldered in as well. So I won't uh, bother to go any further with this one. Um, I know it boots up into Debian. If you want to check out a very good review of um, this particular box, then you can check out in Morrison's uh, review of it upon CNX software, which is pretty thorough. Uh, so I probably don't need to go through uh, any of the tests, but uh, what he says there, I fully concur with. Um, it's a fairly good box. You really need to install the OS onto an M2 SSD uh, as opposed to relying on the internal eMMC. Uh, it's far too slow. So anyway, uh, that's it for this box. Now the other thing that uh, GearBest sent me uh, was a graphics tablet. Now the reason why I wanted one of these uh, is I wanted to see if I could actually improve uh, my workflow while I'm editing videos. So this is one of the ideas I had, is to get a graphics tablet um, and I could sort of hack it. Uh, so it's a fairly basic uh, graphics tablet. Okay, so this is an active uh, pen, which means it requires batteries and also charging, um, which is a bit of a pest. Anyway, my plan is to not use um, a, a Mac, but uh, connect this to um, an MCU of some sort, some description, so I can directly uh, control the interface so this is another project for later on, um, when I have some time. As far as I can see, it works well. You've got a driver there that works. Um, there's a little bit of a difficulty in getting the software to sort of work. Primarily use GIMP for all my uh, graphics editing. So it's a shame that it wasn't supported. Anyway, on to the next thing. So continuing the theme, going from uh, biggest to smallest. This is another package that actually arrived last week. And it's been sitting around looking at me. Okay, so this is DF Robot, and I have to say, DF Robot are pretty speedy. Um, I ordered this on the Friday and arrived on a Sunday, a Sunday delivery. So this is a, another project that I've got coming up, which involves a water flow sensor, and a water flow turbine generator, and a Fire Beetle ESP32, and in fact, I actually asked DF Robot if they'd send me two of these. Uh, because the plan is I'll make up this as a project. I'll run another competition. So this is the uh, What's this one? This is the um, the turbine generator Very simple. It's just got a turbine in there. It provides a steady 5 volts out So that's actually quite handy to have uh, and this one the water flow sensor 
So it can handle 0 to 30 litres per minute um, and it provides a pulse out um, so you can actually measure how much uh, water flow is going through. And this is, of course is the Fire Beetle. Uh, ESP Fire Beetle. So if you watched my alarm clock video you would have seen this before. Uh, so this is quite a good little project that I've got coming up. So the next one, I don't know where this one came from. Let's find out. Ah, excellent. Okay, so you would have seen in weekly roundup number 40, I uh, found these, well actually it wasn't, I didn't find them. Peter Scargill found these very small touch sensors. And the really good thing about these are only about a dollar US each. You provide a voltage, you know, 3.3 volts, I think it is, from memory. Um, and it's a very tiny capacitive touch. It's got a little LED on it. Uh, and it's a simple on, off, on, off. And if you wanted to be able to have a whole lot of buttons, uh, it's actually the cheapest thing to have. They're just multi-purpose. You can put them anywhere. In fact, uh, the capacitive touch is so sensitive that it'll work through a case as well. So, um, so I bought a couple of these. <laughs> Wait for it. Uh, I think there's about 130 all up. The reason being is I have a fairly good project coming up, which will use 130 of these little touch, uh, capacitive touch uh, sensors. So let's um, fire one of these up and see what it looks like. So I wrote a quick and dirty program up on the screen. Um, and the good thing about these buttons is that they handle all the key bounce for you. So you can see um, it's just, there's no key bounce at all, which is nice. Um, let's see what it looks like with a bezel in front of it. So this is a fairly thick uh, sort of bezel that came off my alarm clock. Um, you can't quite see it, it's quite dark. So let's just turn the studio lights off. So I've turned off the overhead desk lights and just uh, using the room lights. Um, so you can see it through a fairly dark sort of bezel. Um, and it looks quite good. For a dollar a pop, you know, US, uh, a nice little debounced uh, touch, capacitive touch button. So that's quite good. So as you can see, I've got a whole bucket load of these. Uh, this is gonna be fun. I've actually got two projects in mind. One of them is to build a video editing console. And the other one is something I am working on. Uh, but you'll see that, no doubt, uh, in a video coming up. Okay, next. So I just went to my mailbox and there was this waiting for me, which is a Kickstarter backed. And fairly simple. Uh, power supply, uh, you've got a, a small uh, variable uh, voltage out and all the uh, standard PC uh, power supply voltages as well, you know 12 to 35 on this end and 12, 5 and 3.3. .3. So it's a fairly basic uh, sort of unit but I thought it would be quite handy uh, because I've got plenty of uh, ATX power supplies hanging around. So let's attach one of these and see how it goes. So it's fairly straightforward. You get your um, standard uh, PC power supply um, and then just whack it in. Look, it's a no-brainer really. Um, and you can control the voltage uh, by adjusting this little trim pot. It's also provide a little external switch connector uh, and there's also an onboard uh, PCB sort of uh, switch. The only issue I can see with this switch is it's floating around. Uh, it would have been good to have that glued to the PCB in some way. Um, but you know, that's fine. Let's power it on. Depending on the power supply you use will depend on how accurate the voltage is coming out. Um, so this is a fairly cheap power supply that I've got. Um, uh, fairly accurate, you know, 3.3 volts. 5 volts is uh, 5.2, but that's not so much of an issue. 11.3, uh, so 12 volts is a little bit low. Um, and the variable is, you know, 18.8, but of course you can adjust this. Uh, goes down to 11 um, and up to 38 um, and you can adjust it fairly accurately so it's a fairly smooth pot that he's used um, if you want to adjust it to 30 volts uh, you can sort of get there a little bit of tweaking so all up I think it's a fairly fairly good option um, if you want to have a high amperage uh, power supply and you've got a spare ATX um, 
power supply hanging around, then it's you know pretty good. Uh, the inclusion of variable power supply is a good idea. Um, without that, um, it'll be you know fairly fairly pointless, I think, to be honest. And uh, looks fairly professional. Um, the layout is pretty good. It's a pretty decent job he's done on it. So there you go. That's um, that was a Kickstarter that I backed um, a couple of months back. So there we have it, we have the uh, Banggood 3D printer, which will be an interesting one to try out. The model I got was the acrylic based one, not the 3D printed um, parts. Uh, so it'll be good to try that one out and uh, get some 3D prints going finally. Um, then there's also the B-Link AP34, which I'll keep as a, a stock standard Windows box because I need to have some Windows box around sometimes. Then the uh, Geekbest tablet, which hopefully I'll be able to use as part of a video editing control uh, desk. Then there's also the ESP32 water flow sensor and gyro generator, uh, which would be an interesting project coming up. Then there's the capacitive touch buttons, the many, many capacitive touch buttons I got, and finally the uh, ATX power supply. So that's about it for this week's Mick Make Mail number 17. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I'll probably get some complaints from this, but uh, I've got some a nasty sort of uh, sort of disease on my hands at the moment. This is actually called Raynaud's disease. You won't catch anything. Don't worry. Got something to do with uh, blood flow and circulation and so forth. So I don't know what that is. It just sort of suddenly turned up, and so my fingers really hard for some reason. Anyway.